So Joel, how strong are you? I don't know, pretty strong I guess. So if I ask you to start up the Kids Corner, you think you could do that? Uh, you mean like this? Monica, over here. There you are, Jasmine. How are you doing? I'm good. I love the outfit. Thanks. You too. So where are we going for brunch? There's a nice bistro on the other side of the park. They have some killer scones. Oh, nice. I've been looking for a new... Ladies! Wait a minute. Aren't you... Bravado Man! Dashing, brave, and leader of the Titan Force Ultra! Yeah, can I get your autograph? Or maybe a selfie? I would be glad to, ma'am, but unfortunately I've got my hands full, as you can see. Looks like you're just doing a handstand to me. Oh, I suppose it would look that way to the average citizen. But no, I actually am holding up the earth so it doesn't fall down. I beg your pardon? It's a tough job, but someone's gotta do it. You mean you're actually holding the earth up? How does that even work? Well, that's superpowers for you. They kind of defy the narrative of space and physics. Well, excuse me for not being totally convinced, Mr... Bravado, man! No, I, I get it, but perhaps a demonstration. I don't think... Sure! Very well. If I give the planet a little toss... <clears throat> Did you feel that? Um, maybe a little? So the ground shakes when you do a handspring. Maybe you should lay off the extra donut speck in your hideout. Fine. How about this? With the turn of my wrist, it's nighttime, daytime... Nighttime! Daytime! What? How are you doing that? What in tarnation? I must be going back to The sky turned dark, and then it was light, and then it was dork, and then it was light again. Wait till I tell my Esther about this! Believe me now? I do! I admit, it's a good trick. Thanks. It's not an easy job, but until my shift is over, somebody's gotta do it. Could you do me a favor, girls? Sure, you name it. Since I'm a little busy at the moment, would you be so kind as to turn on that radio over there? I'd like to listen to something while I work. No problem. Are you sure you want to get rid of some of these, Lionel? A few of these are worth a fair amount. Absolutely. The kids haven't been reading them as often, and they're just taking up space here. Superhero fatigue? <laughs> something like that. I'm sure I'll find another collection at the thrift store after a while, and the kids will get back into them again. What will we get back into? Yeah, what's going on in here? Oh, hi, girls. Mr. Brian and I were talking about these old comic books we've had around for a while. Oh, are you finally getting rid of those? It's about time. I guess you weren't joking. Yeah, like I say, for everything there is a season. Well, I'll be sure to take care of them, and if the spirit of adventure and imagination comes back to dwell in the hearts of children again... I'm sure the great champions like Captain Heroic and Dolphin Lady will make their return. Yeah, yeah. So, if we are not going to read comic books, what is there to do around here? I'm sure something interesting will pop up around here, Jasmine. Until it does, we can start up the radio. All right, that'll keep me busy for a few months, at least. Hope you enjoy them, Brian. Thanks. Any chance I could grab that cup of joe before I head out? Oh, I'm glad you reminded me. I'll start a fresh pot. Come on in. Come on, Flynn. Let's get some coffee. Mr. Brian is pretty excited to get all those comic books from Mr. Jacobs. I didn't know he liked that stuff. It's not that surprising. He's got that kind of personality. Personality? Sure. He likes collecting things and doesn't mind using his imagination and having fun with the drama scripts. Oh yeah, drama scripts. Do you think we'll be reading one of those today? We might. Though I think Mr. Brian's in a bit of a hurry to get home with his new collection. Oh, okay. So why don't you like comic books, Monica? Me? Who said I didn't? You know what I'm talking about. That whole it's about time to get rid of those things bit. Oh, they've been around for a while. Besides, they are a little silly. You know, with all those heroes with superpowers doing crazy stuff, going up against angry mobs and evil masterminds, it all just gets a little unbelievable after a while. Huh. Yeah, unbelievable. Is there something wrong, Jasmine? I... I don't know. I guess I was just thinking about how... You could kind of say that stuff about the wild stories in the Bible. All of those people flying around, getting healed, having super strength, and suddenly understanding different languages. Well, yeah, but that's different. Those people had God helping them. Okay, but... 
Couldn't we say the same thing about God? God? But he's not a superhero. He's God. Right, but the stuff it says he does in the Bible is kind of crazy, too. I mean, splitting the Red Sea, walking on water, destroying the whole world with a flood, and making the universe in just six days. It's like you said, after a while it just gets unbelievable. Yeah, like I said. I mean, I know we're supposed to think God can do anything, but I'm not sure it's that simple. What do you think? Me? I think... I'm going to listen to the radio until we can ask Mr. Jacobs about it. Really? I'm not going to make up an answer. Besides, I want to hear what his explanation is. Fair enough. Start it up. You got everything, Brian? I think so. I've got my keys, the creative comic books, notes for tonight's Bible study, coffee. Yep, think I'll be heading out. Mr. Jacobs, we have a question for you. Yeah, how powerful is God? On the other hand, that's quite a question, girls. What brought that on? We were just talking about those superhero comic books and how they have really wacky stories about people who can fly, pick up really heavy things. You know, stuff that couldn't really happen. Debatable. <laughs> Go on. So that's when Jasmine brought up that there are stories like that in the Bible and how they make it hard for us to take them seriously. And then she said she was going to let you explain it. All right. I think the first thing to understand is, unlike you and me, God isn't part of his creation. He's not limited to how it works, nor does he need anything from it. He designed it. And with the power and authority that simply has no natural comparison, all he has to do is speak, and an entire universe comes into existence. And that means nature has to bend its will to him, not the other way around. Exactly. That's why in Matthew 8, 26, when Jesus spoke, the storm had to be still. And in the next chapter, verse 6, when he told a lame man to walk, he had no choice but be healed. So God, and I guess people he's helping, can pretty much do anything? That's what it says in Luke 1, 37, Philippians 4, 13, Job 42, 2, Jeremiah 32, 17. Okay, I get it. A lot of places. Yeah, it kind of drives me up the wall when people say God can't do something. I've heard people say that he can't turn back time or change people's hearts or things like that. And it's like, yes, he can. God can do anything. That's true, Brian. But just because God can do something doesn't mean he will. He's also wise. And he weighs every decision very carefully so that things turn out for the best. Sometimes we ask for God to do things. And when he doesn't, it can feel like he doesn't care. or We might start thinking he can't do what we ask. But that's just not the case. He just knows what's best. And sometimes that means not using his power to do things in the way that we want. Kind of like we read in James 4 and Luke 22:42. It's like the comics say, with great power comes great responsibility. Or Luke 12, 48. Or that, yeah. Does that answer your question, girls? Yeah, we're going to have to think it over a little. And while you do that, I'll listen to the radio. Weren't you heading out, Brian? Well, yeah, but I was kind of sticking around to see if there were any other deep questions that were going to come up. Oh, you don't think I can handle them? No, I just don't want to get left out. Well, I don't know how deep this question is, but I've got another one. Great. Let's hear it. All right. We've been talking about how God can do anything because he's got power and authority. Got it. What I want to know is if God can do something that's wrong. You know, like sin. Ah, interesting question, Monica. I think there are a few ways to answer this one, if I may, Lionel. Go ahead. Thanks. I think there's one answer that goes back to what we were talking about earlier, about how God can do everything. But that doesn't mean he would ever choose to. God has the power and authority to do all sorts of horrible things to us, but because he loves the universe and everyone in it, he will never do those things. And in verses like Genesis 9-1 and Hebrews 13-5, there are some things he has promised that he will never do. But he could, though. Perhaps. But at the same time, if you think about what sin is, it can usually be described as the opposite of what God wants and what God says. For instance, in Hebrews 6-18, it tells us that it's impossible for God to lie. But I think that it's not a matter of God not being strong enough to be able to lie. But instead, because he has such great authority, what God says is truth. 
So in that way, it's not that God can't lie. It's that lies aren't able to come from God's mouth. Oh, that's not confusing at all. Yeah, I think I get it a little. But maybe if you give us another example, we might be able to get it a little more. Let's put it this way. A lot of time, you'll hear people say that God cannot be near sin. I always thought this was a little backwards because if he couldn't be near sin, then he couldn't be near any of us. Plus, in a verse that I'll remember the reference to later, it says that Jesus, God, became sin for us when he died. 2 Corinthians 5. Right. Getting more confused. Yeah, so God can be close to sin. Cool, I guess. Ah, but there's the thing. Sin can't be close to God. It's like fire and paper. Some people might say that fire can't be close to paper, but it totally can. The thing is, paper would be destroyed by fire. And in the same way, sin can't be close to God. His holiness, power, truth, and forgiveness destroy any sin he comes in contact with, and the results are life-changing. Okay, I think I get it a little more. I'll have to talk to my parents about that, too. Good plan. All right, I have a question. Could God create a rock so big that he couldn't lift it? Ooh, a classic. Indeed, and I think you'll find your answer in Isaiah 53.10. Which says... (laughs) What do I look like, a walking, talking Bible? Go look it up for yourself and stop bothering me. (laughs) Okay. See you later, Mr. Jacobs. Bye, kids. Come back anytime. I guess I'll get out of your hair, too. Want me to hit the radio on the way out? That'd be great. Thanks.